let's talk about this this film, the Brandon Burlesworth story. Greater. Um, when did you first hear about Brandon Burlesworth, Bill? When did that uh, first happen? He was a in the beginning of his senior year at Arkansas. Um, I, I went down to an Arkansas game. He was on our list of prospects to follow, and uh, and as I usually do, I or did. Um, I checked out all of the background, and and when I went through the background, I was astounded. And here's a guy that's a walk-on, uh, that, that that you know, rises to the level of a, an All-American, incredible student, incredible leader. Um, so I decided to do a little further checking, and I spoke with Houston Nutt and people at Arkansas that I knew, and. They raved about the kid. I mean, it, it was they couldn't say enough good things about him. And uh, then our scouts went in there, and the scouts all came back and said the first guy everybody at Arkansas talks about is Brandon Burlesworth. And, of course, he was, you know, from the standpoint of the eye test, um, he didn't pass. <laughs> he was, you know, it wasn't a great-looking body, and he had those glasses which turned out to be a marketing boon in the sense that they were uh, they were a, a trademark for him, but – he wasn't concerned about that either. He was only concerned about being the best football player he could be. And so when we got to the senior bowl, Howard Mudd, our great offensive line coach, looked at him and, and, and fell in love. And uh, we drafted him in the third round. And um, after the first practice of the first mini camp, we had the whole squad there at the time. It wasn't just rookies. Um, Howard came up to me and he said, that, you know, Brandon will be a star on opening day, and he'll be there for the rest of his career. I said, okay, that's fair enough. And then, of course, um, we, mm. we got the, the tragic news that, he, that he'd been killed. Oh, my gosh, Bill. What a story. I mean, that's why guys are making a movie out of it. So, basically, yeah. you, you think he would have been right next to Saturday all those years protecting Peyton? Absolutely. No question about it. None whatsoever. Huh. He would have been the right guard for all of his career. So how, how did how did the team tell? Who told the team? I mean, how did that all go down? Uh, the team had left because we found out if Brandon was uh, hmm. uh, killed in a in, a, in a, a crash on the open highway driving home from minicamp from Indianapolis to Arkansas. So we got the the news uh, late that night. Um, obviously, whenever. Anyone passes away, it's a tragedy. But for a young person like that who had the, the world at his feet uh, professionally and, and had everything together personally, um, it, it was heartrending. And uh, Howard and I and Coach Mora and many others went down to the funeral. And, um, and one of the things that I took away from it was that, and I said this at a, during a Hall of Fame, ceremony uh, previewing the film months ago um, Brandon in death certainly in the state of Arkansas and I think maybe around America because of this film will have made more of an impact than he might have in life offensive linemen even one of of his notoriety are, are usually rather anonymous he's no longer anonymous and what he did in his short life serves as an inspiration to, to kids all over Arkansas and lives on through the Burlesworth Foundation. And, uh, and I think his story was going to resonate with kids all over America through this film. And so, uh, in many ways, his, his tragic death uh, will have contributed a heck of a lot to society, just as he might have had he lived. Yeah, and the Brandon Burlesworth Trophy is given annually to college football's best player who began his career as a walk-on, and Burles' kids through that Brandon Burlesworth Foundation provides free tickets to underprivileged children for every Colts and Arkansas home game still to this day. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.